The world is taking another step towards fulfilling end-time prophecies. The Red Heifer, so crucial for the purification ritual of the Third Temple, has already been born in Israel. And now it's only a matter of time until this monument is erected and the Antichrist emerges to fulfill his role. In this video, I'll show you something that no one is talking about regarding the Red Heifers, and I'll also explain to you in a very simple way why they are so important. You'll be surprised at how advanced the Jews are in breeding and reproducing this animal, which needs to be in perfect condition according to the laws of Moses to fulfill its great purpose. In fact, some believe that these heifers will be the reason for the escalation of the war between Jews and Arabs, potentially even triggering a conflict of global proportions. But can a simple cow really be the reason for the start of World War III? I'll tell you everything I think about it, so stay with me until the end. First, I just want to ask you to subscribe to my channel. It's very easy. It's free. Just click on the subscribe button and activate the notification bell because I want to help you understand the Bible in a simple and easy way. So, let's get started. In chapter 19 of the Book of Numbers in the Old Testament, God instructed Moses on a purification ritual for people considered impure so that they could reintegrate into the community. The procedure involved the use of a completely red heifer, which couldn't have given birth to any calves or have done any work, like plowing, for example. And unlike other animals, this cow had to be sacrificed by the priest outside the tabernacle. Then another man would come and burn the animal completely. Both the priest who made the sacrifice and the man who burned the heifer needed to wash themselves, remaining impure until the end of the day. Then, a third man would collect the ashes of the heifer and store them in a clean place outside the camp, also needing to wash afterward. These ashes were mixed with water called purification water and served to purify people who had touched corpses or been in tents where someone died. This purification allowed the person to return to living in the Hebrews' camp, and if they didn't do this, the person was excluded from the community. But there's a catch. This ceremony hasn't been performed by them for thousands of years, because the tabernacle no longer exists, and neither does the Temple of Jerusalem, where these rituals were performed, as it was destroyed in the year 70 after Christ. And since the Jews are wanting to rebuild the temple because they believe the Messiah will come into the world to sit in it, they are already preparing for the rituals of the Old Testament to be performed again soon. In the year 2018, the Israeli entity Temple Institute informed the world of something surprising. After much searching and millions of dollars in investments, the first completely red heifer in 2000 years was found in the United States. And from now on, they are ready to begin the construction of the Third Temple of Jerusalem which means we are very close to the fulfillment of end-time prophecies, including the arrival of the Antichrist and the return of Jesus. On September 16, 2022, five perfect red heifers were transported from a farm in the state of Texas to the Israeli capital, where they are under the care of the Temple Institute, eagerly awaiting the moment of the first animal's sacrifice, because without it, it will be impossible to rebuild the long-awaited Third Temple of Jerusalem. The world has known only two Jewish temples. The first was built on the Temple Mount by King Solomon and lasted 390 years until the Babylonians destroyed it in 586 BC. And the second, built after the captivity of the Jewish people in Babylon, in the same place, stood for 585 years before being destroyed by the Romans in the year 70 AD. And the third temple is related to a prophecy that will be fulfilled at the end of times. The Bible makes it clear that it is in this place that the Antichrist will sit to rule the world, deceiving and persecuting the Jews. But before talking about the beginning of the Antichrist's rule on earth, we need to understand why the Jews are so excited about the arrival of the Red Heifers in Israel. Since the time of Moses, the Jews have always believed that God's presence was connected to their proximity to the tabernacle and later the temple. And with the destruction of these two physical places by enemy peoples, the Jews believe that God ceased to be completely on their side and therefore has not yet sent them the Messiah promised in the scriptures, remembering that they do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. For the Jews, God will only send the Messiah to the children of Abraham when the temple is rebuilt and, consequently, the covenant between them is re-established. 
And here I just want to quickly open a parenthesis for you to understand how important this fact is to them. Jewish theologians believe that throughout the Old Testament period, only nine perfect red heifers were found and sacrificed for this purification ritual. And now, getting back to our subject, the Temple Institute awaits only a green light to begin the construction work of the building, which will be identical to Solomon's temple, and will be erected in exactly the same place. The responsible architects have already delivered the ready plans, the furniture, and the utensils that will be used in the temple are all ready. And another important fact already announced is that the people who will serve in the third temple have already been selected. It is known that all of them are from the lineage of Aaron, Moses' brother and the first high priest of the temple that the Hebrews raised during the desert journey towards the promised land. And there's more. These people are already participating in rehearsals for the temple's inauguration ceremony, where they will perform the first purification sacrifice of the place with the ashes of the first red heifer. But some things still need to be resolved. The third temple will be built in a place that is sacred to Jews, Christians, and Muslims, being also one of the most disputed places in the world. There are the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, built in the 7th century and among the oldest structures in the Muslim world. Although Israel regained control of the old city of Jerusalem and the area of the Temple Mount in the Six-Day War in 1967, the Mount remains under Jordanian custody due to the peace treaty signed at that time. Israeli Jews can enter the temple, but they cannot perform religious ceremonies there. So for the third temple to be built, Jews and Muslims would have to resolve their differences. In this sense, experts in historical conflicts between the two peoples are stating that the crisis between them will worsen from now on, including the possibility of a major war being initiated because of that territory. The Arabs are already aware of the existence of the five perfect red heifers in Jerusalem, and therefore they are already preparing to strongly defend their territory from a possible Israeli attack to retake the place where the Dome of the Rock is built. Besides the issue of pride, Islamic theology believes in a being called Dajjal, a figure very similar to the Antichrist of the Bible, who will come before the Day of Judgment to divert people from the true path. He is described as the great deceiver and will be capable of performing great miracles to deceive people. According to Islamic teachings, Dajjal will travel the earth for a period, deceiving and leading people to believe that he is divine and could arrive exactly at the third temple that will be built by the Jews. The emergence of Dajjal is one of the main signs of the end times in Islam and he will finally be defeated by the Islamic Messiah, the Mahdi, and by Jesus Christ who in their view is just a great prophet, who will descend from heaven and kill Dajjal. But despite this theory of the Red Heifer causing a major war between Jews and Arabs to the point of it becoming global, I don't believe that will happen. It's more likely that the Antichrist will take advantage of this moment to broker an agreement between these two peoples for the new temple to be built in the place that still generates so much conflict today. With his persuasive power, the Antichrist will manage to get the three largest religions on the planet to sign a major peace treaty, and this agreement is what will allow the Third Temple to finally be built in Jerusalem. This will be the sign for the Jews to believe that that man is the Messiah they have been waiting for so long. After all, they rejected Jesus because they did not accept that their Savior would be a common human figure similar to them. The Jews have always waited for a superior being, just as the Antichrist will be, and therefore they will be easily deceived. And returning to the question of the Third Temple, there is information that after the permission for its construction, the temple should be completely ready within just one year, and it will be from within this sacred place that the Antichrist will rule the world. The Bible shows that during the first three and a half years, the peace agreement between nations will be maintained, and the earth will live in harmony. The vast majority of people will love and bow down before the great world leader, but at the end of this period, he will break the agreement, committing in the temple what the Bible calls a terrible sacrilege, initiating the worst period of the Great Tribulation. It will be at this moment that God's wrath will begin to be poured out upon the earth, and the Jewish people will come to see that the Messiah they had been waiting for had already come into the world 2,000 years ago, but was rejected by them. And the prophet Zechariah prophesied about this moment. Just look at what Jesus spoke through his servant. 
I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. On that day the weeping in Jerusalem will be as great as the weeping of Hadad Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. Look at this, brothers. So, at the end of the seven years of the Great Tribulation, Jesus will return, defeat the Antichrist, the false prophet, and finally Satan. Then he will gather his bride, which is us, the Christians, with the people of the chosen nation, the converted Jews, and all of us will live in peace in the New Jerusalem, an eternal place where there will be no pain, lies, evil, crying, or sadness. So, brothers, as much as these unblemished red heifers have great significance for the Jews at this moment in history, they mean absolutely nothing to us. In the past, in the Old Testament, they represented the offering for the purification of sin, bringing new life and redemption to the people. And without the death of this very rare animal, the impure people could not return to the presence of God. And this symbolizes what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. He sacrificed himself so that we could have our impurities washed away once and for all and could enter the presence of the Lord. The ashes of the red heifer represent the death of Christ, and the purification water represents his blood. And about the construction of the third temple, I know there are many Christians who become terrified when they hear about this issue. But we should not worry because Christ has already guaranteed us victory, and our crown is stored. We just need to persevere until the end. Amen? At the end of the book of Revelation, the Lord leaves us the following message. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. Hallelujah! If you enjoyed this message, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to my channel. I'll be waiting for you in the next video. May God bless you powerfully.